Hello and welcome to this video where we're taking a look at Steinberg's EQ M5 plugin, which is another plugin which is included with Cubase 13, effectively twice because it's there as a standalone plugin, but it's also part of Vocal Chain. So we're looking at the standalone version of it, but I believe it's exactly the same when it's in Vocal Chain. Now it aims to emulate the Pultec MEQ5, which as you may be able to see on screen is an expensive piece of analog equipment. Uh, certainly a lot more expensive than buying Cubase is, so there the recommended retail price is getting on for $4,000, which is a spicy meatball in anyone's language. And as you can see on screen, you're getting this uh, effectively for free with Cubase, complete with a little bit of rack damage, etc. So uh, that's very jolly. Now, the controls are fairly simple and straightforward. They are emulating the piece of hardware, and the piece of hardware is designed to do a particular job. So this is not your general purpose EQ. This is designed to work on mid-range frequencies, which I guess is where the M in EQ M5 comes from. It's got three bands. So we've got a low boost band, a mid attenuation band, and then a high boost band. Although the range of those, as we will see, is not as wide as a general purpose EQ. To have a look at what it's actually doing to the audio, I've got it set up with the Bertom EQ Curve Analyzer, one before and one after with the instance of EQM5 in the middle. And then when we open it up, we'll see what it's doing. So with it inserted, it's certainly not doing anything significant, unlike the P1 that we've seen in another video on the channel. And we'll just take a look at what these do. So the low frequency sweeps from 200 hertz to 1K. So it's not a wide range frequency. It's certainly not like the general purpose of things. This is designed to be in the mid range, as the name suggests. So let's look at what the low boost does. And as we turn this up, we're seeing a looks fairly standard peaking EQ. It's not super narrow, certainly. Uh, 10 dB seems to equate to 10 dB, which is nice. So that means you can translate from one EQ to another fairly easily. Let's pop it on five and then sweep in the frequency. Seems to do what we'd expect. So that's fairly straightforward. Now let's take a look at the mid frequency. And this is attenuation only. So this may seem slightly unusual because it doesn't allow you to boost. It only allows you to cut. So we've got boost, cut, boost. Frequency wise, we go from 200 up to 7K. So this has got a wider range. So if we put it on the same frequency, 1.5K. In fact, let's put it on the same frequency as that. So 1,000 for both. and then. The question is, do they do the same thing? So if we've got the mid attenuation of five and the low boost of five, do they cancel out? And the answer is no. If you chose to do this, you wouldn't be getting a flat response. So this on the face of it, looking at the controls, you might think this is doing the same thing, but clearly as we can see on screen, it's not. So there's some interaction and differences between those controls. Finally, let's have a look at the high frequency. So I'm just gonna turn these two bands off for the moment. And again, let's put in 5 dB, potentially of boost. And again, this looks similar. So it looks like we've got two bands which are doing pretty much the same kind of thing. So the low and high look like they're doing a similar thing. Although when we add them up, yeah, let's just separate them out. They look, they look similar, although I'd say possibly this one slightly different and I'm not sure whether it's peaking exactly the same. We'd need more detailed analysis than I'm going to do right now in it. But the idea is you can attenuate the mid so you can scoop the mid out while boosting lower and higher around that. So you can get this kind of mountain range with a valley in the middle happening on here. And that's what we'll see variations on with quite a few of the presets. So for instance, backing vocal cut, if we load that up, you can see we've got that there. We've got some cut down here, but also some boost there. So same backing vocal cut, there's a little more to it than that. Electric guitar fatness. So again, guitar is the kind of thing that you expect a lot of top cut here. So it's really, really boosting that. So the mid has moved up to the top end effectively, and then this is your high and this is your low. So they've they've changed roles as it were. 
kit clean up. So it's just scooping out some of that. Uh, I've, I've certainly got that to audition in a bit and we'll have a listen to that. And also hand claps with weight. So this is another one that I've got a quick uh, run through and demo of. And then I think also warm bass we'll have a listen to as well. So warm bass, kind of doing what you expect, a bit of bass boost, but also a bit of present around that kind of finger or picking noise sound as well. So with that out of the way, let's actually have a listen to what it sounds like. So firstly, on vocals with the lead vocal tonal shaper. And then adding it in. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. So again, this is a more subtle effect. It's not going to be night and day. And when you see low, you think uh, low frequency, but actually that's mid-range, really. So this is all you know, mid and upper mid range that it's working on, but it makes a nice difference on that particular voice. Next, let's have a look at it working on claps. So for this example, I've got a couple of hand clap samples from Media Bay. I've just put a bit of reverb on them because they sounded a bit unnatural without that on there, but it's, it's only fairly low level in the background. So here's without EQ. And with. So pretty much as you'd expect from the EQ curve that we saw, there's, there's a bit of extra brightness in there. So it's, it's just bringing those out nicely. This is the kind of thing that will work with some clap samples. It's not going to work with others. Again, it sounds pretty sweet, but it's, it's a subtle change. This, this is not some massive, you know, 24 dB of cut kind of EQ that you're going to hear from a mile off. Next, let's have a listen to it on a couple of kicks. So first, let's have a listen to the kicks without. And then with. Again, it's it's pretty subtle. These are not big numbers. This isn't a massive difference. I think there's a bigger difference on this second sample than the first one, but it's certainly something you'd need to audition carefully to get uh, what you need from it. And obviously, the way that this works will be different when it's in the context of a mix. Finally, let's have a listen to bass. So this is the same sample which I used in the EQ P1A video. So this has got a bit of finger noise in there and it's typical sort of rock bass kind of sound. So let's hear it without some EQ on. And with. So it's made quite a different job of it compared to the EQ P1A preset. So this is warming things up quite nicely. Again, it doesn't sound dull. It's probably going to work quite nicely in a mix. There's other things you'd need to do with that for sure because the dynamics of it need attending to, etc. And all of these, you wouldn't just use them as is. You would tweak them in terms of both frequency and the boost and cut, which is in play. But certainly they are all nice starting points. There's not a huge number of presets at this point. So what's that, 11? Uh, 10, in fact. So there's 10 presets there, but they are reasonable. Oh, yeah, there's a number there that tells you how many. You don't have to count them while you're speaking. As you would expect as well, automation-wise. So let's just go and have a look at what's available here. And surprise, surprise, the controls are all available. And if we look at them, they all follow the kind of range we would expect. So they've all been programmed properly. We would expect nothing less at this point. But again, it's useful to have those available to you, even if, as a, I don't think this is the kind of thing you're going to be doing a lot of automation on, but I could be wrong. For me, this is generally would be a set and forget thing. But I'm sure there's plenty of people who go, no, no, I automate this all the time and I'm constantly changing frequencies, et cetera, which you might be. So it's horses for courses isn't it? and that's available to you, which is the most important thing. So the EQ M5 gives you access to effectively an emulation of an extremely expensive piece of hardware, which is revered amongst uh, a certain kind of studio. 
it certainly does something interesting and i think this is a useful trend in some eq plugins and certainly one that steinberg have gone with where it's not just the universal swiss army knife of eqs it does a more limited range of things but by doing so it gives you perhaps some way of concentrating on what you're doing and thinking about what you're doing but also limitations like this often yield better results i think rather than say having the swiss army knife multi-settable EQ that can be any kind of EQ with at least three controls in all modes. This says, here's your controls, uh, do your best with them. And after all, some great recordings have been made with limitations like that and on hardware like this. It's designed to control the ever busier mid-range of recordings, so it should help with those kind of decisions and allowing you to scoop out appropriate frequencies to make room in your mix for for different things and allow different diverse sounds to sit together it's a welcome addition obviously because hopefully everybody has cubase will have it and it will make transporting sessions between different studios simpler certainly for me so me being selfish i'm quite happy with that so as ever i hope you found that video useful and look around the channel for other cubase 13 cubase and indeed non-cubase content if you're new and if you feel like it, please, you know, leave a comment, like, subscribe, etc. And hopefully we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.